Hey everyone, this week I've been driving this 2021 Lexus RCF Fuji Speedway Edition. Uh, the RC can be thought of as the two-door version of the Lexus IS. So the RC is to the IS what the BMW 4 Series is to the BMW 3 Series. Uh, the RC came out for the 2015 model year, as did the RCF. The RCF uses Lexus's naturally aspirated 5-liter V8. It makes 472 horsepower and 395 pounds-feet of torque. That's sent to the rear wheels via an 8-speed automatic transmission. The name of the game with the RCF Fuji Edition here is weight savings and that is achieved through the use of a number of carbon fiber parts uh, like the hood is unpainted carbon fiber uh, it's got a carbon fiber front lip it's got a carbon fiber spoiler on the rear which is quite large and then it uses a number of other weight savings parts it also has a titanium exhaust and they've gotten rid of the heated and ventilated seats uh, but then they've left the second row seat which is Pretty much useless in a car like this so i don't know that's toyota for you though but anyway this car is about 120 pounds lighter than a regular rcf uh it also costs a hundred thousand dollars and they're only going to make 60 of these so it's a pretty limited run anyway though let's do a tour of the rcf fuji speedway edition here and then take it for a drive so let's focus on the carbon fiber bits here this is a carbon fiber hood and it actually has a functioning vent in it there's a carbon fiber lip spoiler here that hangs down fairly low. It's actually not too bad. I've driven in and out of some parking lots and uh, it's never really scraped. That lip comes over here too, so this is kind of a separate part right here. These are 19 inch wheels. I really like them. They're a matte black finish. They've got this silver ring around them and they're kind of understated. I'm also pleasantly surprised that they aren't like 20s or 21 inch wheels oh boy you can see these carbon ceramic brakes here they have a crackling pattern in them you can see there's an f logo and then it says carbon ceramic uh, these are brembos although they don't say brembo on them they say brembo on the discs right there though i've never looked at carbon ceramic brakes up close all i know is that they are ridiculously expensive to replace moving down the side here's your f badge and then a carbon fiber side skirt there moving around to the rear and there's a carbon fiber diffuser here and then the rear spoiler is carbon fiber as well and it even has an f logo embedded in it in a well a piece of carbon fiber that's facing the opposite direction so maybe you can see it better on this side anyway let's take a look in the trunk so rcf well, the RC is a compact coupe, so trunk here is on par with other compact luxury coupes. Other than it being red, there's not too much that differs with this interior. It does include some carbon fiber bits that are uh, red. Steering wheel is kind of fun. It has red on the bottom here, though it's not a flat bottom. The red matches the red interior. And then here are the paddle shifters in the plus, in the minus, in the paddle shifters. They're actually blue, which is fun. That's the blue color from the F branding there. Not a whole lot else to show. This interior is pretty dated. Uh, Lexus doesn't really update things very often and i don't know that they see much of a future for the is and the rc line i know they updated the is this year but the competition has so far surpassed that vehicle that uh, the fact that they just updated it and didn't fully redesign it tells me that yeah, it might not be in their long-term plans and if the is isn't in their long-term plans then the rc here definitely isn't either so what we're looking at here uh may may or may not get get an update may or may not get a second generation ever here's the back seat it's really tight and small it seats two across you can see that's about how much room the back seat passenger would get with the passenger seat in this location so pretty tight back there like i said if the real goal of this vehicle is weight reduction then i don't know why it would still have this back seat given that the back seat's pretty much useless and it would probably be an easy way to save at least 100 pounds instead though they've removed the heated and ventilated seats. So uh, while these seats are pretty fun, they're like a leather and a suede material, and they have these vents in them, and they have an F logo in them, and they're all a one-piece seat back. Uh, they are neither heated nor ventilated, which is really strange in a $100,000 luxury car. 
Anyway, though, let's take the RCF. Well, first, let's uh, let's pop the hood. Oh, another funny thing before we do that, the emergency brake for this vehicle is still on the floor. So it's really lightweight. Here you can see some of that carbon fiber pattern on the underside of the hood. But if I had to guess, this hood maybe weighs 25 or 30 pounds. Uh, carbon fiber hood, carbon fiber roof, carbon fiber spoiler, carbon fiber splitter up front, carbon fiber diffuser, and carbon fiber side skirts. Altogether, those make up the majority of that 120 pound weight savings. There's your five liter V8. It's finished in blue there. It's got the F emblem on it. All right. Lexus RCF Fuji edition. This car is bizarre and wonderful, and it makes very little sense. <laughs> this five liter V8 is probably the best thing about it. Uh, 472 horsepower, 395 pounds-feet of torque. Uh, often you're seeing that with turbocharged engines, they generally make more torque than horsepower, but with these old naturally aspirated engines, uh, that's reversed. That's good for a zero to 60 time of about four seconds flat. So right now we are in normal mode. Uh, we'll do a pull out here and then I'll go into sport and sport. Well, I think it's sport S and sport S plus because Lexus is weird. There's 50. Uh, we could have gotten going a lot faster than 50 in a, a short amount of time there. This five liter V8, I've now driven it in the GSF, which is now discontinued. I've driven it in the LC 500 convertible, which was unbelievably fun. And now in this vehicle where it's also really, really fun. Uh, it's not fuel efficient. And uh, I mean, even Lexus and Toyota have already shown their hand here. They're moving to a three and a half liter twin turbo V6 as their new performance engine. And uh, this five liter V8 here will presumably hang around for a couple of more years, but it won't be featured in any new vehicles, I wouldn't think. So in a way, the RCF Fuji edition here kind of represents the ultimate application of this five liter V8. The exhaust note comes on at about 3000 RPM. So it sounds good from zero up to three. And then after three, it gets really deep and um, it sounds even better. Interior feels really good. Uh, it's Lexus quality, Lexus fit and finish. Um, ergonomics are designed more for the Japanese market than they are American expectations. It's probably the best way to put it uh, just because many Lexus products, it's like, as an American, I look at this stuff, I'm like, what, why are they doing it this way? But uh, I have to think that it's designed first and foremost for the Japanese user. And uh, then when it comes to the US, and we have to tolerate a lot of weird stuff. So we're just going to shoot up the canyon here and then we will pull over and wrap things up after we can uh, see what this thing's like at you know, 60, 70, 75 miles per hour. Let's go into Sport S. So you go from normal to Sport S to Sport S Plus. I know I've said this in other reviews, but why is it not Sport and Sport S or Sport and Sport Plus? It's just unnecessarily complicated. So here's normal. Here's Sport S. Yeah, it happened faster. And then Sport S Plus, yeah, it was already there. It's so one thing that's a little bit disappointing about this car is the uh, shifting. So it's got paddle shifters. Anytime a car has paddle shifters, I tend to use them. But when you downshift in this car, there's no audible reward for doing so. It's just very quiet. Woo, a little oversteer. Um, it's very quiet. It doesn't seem to play into the typical performance car noisiness with regard to the transmission. It seems like maybe they just left the transmission alone. Um, Lexus is generally more conservative than like a BMW or a Mercedes, but um, for 100,000, 100,000 plus, 
I, I wish I wish the car gave you a little bit more audible feedback when you did something fun, like maybe downshift from fourth to third. See, I just went from fourth to third and you didn't really hear anything there. There's no reward from the exhaust. The revs jump, but there's no special noise or extra noise that comes out of the rear. That sounds nice though. So we're in Sport S Plus. Uh, that is the most hardcore setting. It's not difficult to induce oversteer in this car, uh, even with stability control and everything left alone. So uh, I was turning left back there to get on the on-ramp and I was able to flick the back end out. Um, it feels pretty controlled, honestly. Uh, I've maybe been doing it a little more often than I should, but it's because I feel really comfortable doing it and the stability control system intervenes and doesn't let you oversteer by more than yeah, more than a couple of degrees. One thing I don't like, in fact I absolutely despise, is this turn signal lever. Uh, the IS and the RC have this where the turn signal lever both go back to center. So to turn left it goes, you know, the, a normal car goes chick, and then when you finish the turn it goes back. This car, to turn left, you press the stock and it goes chick, chick. and then it still turns off when you complete the turn, but it's really, really confusing. Um, it's one of those things that wasn't broken, and for whatever reason, Toyota and Lexus tried to fix with the IS and the RC here, and it's just, it's, it's infuriating. You're turning left, and you want to turn the turn signal off, and you turn it back too far, and then the right turn signal comes on, you're just in this endless cycle. It's got to go. It's terrible. But again, the fact that they haven't gotten rid of it tells me that maybe they don't see too much of a future for this platform. As far as weight goes, is it really that much better? Probably not. Um, it doesn't really give you that much of an advantage. I don't know if you're buying one of these to take it on the track. I think that would be a little strange. And the fact that they're only building 60 of these tells me that that's about as many as they think they can sell. This car does more probably for the Lexus shopper who happens to come across it on the Lexus website when they've gone there to look at an NX or a UX or an RX. Uh, it's kind of a brand builder. It does more for the person who has no interest in buying one of these by maybe giving them a more positive perception of the Lexus brand than it does the actual enthusiast who's looking for a track car. Because, I mean, you could probably do a lot better than this for a hundred grand. It's still fun to drive though downshift from fourth to third to second to first. Yeah, you didn't hear a thing, did you? <laughs> All right, and the one final thing I want to test out before we wrap up is launch control. So this car does have a launch button. Uh, the way it works is you put the car into, I think it has to be in Sport S Plus, then you turn off stability control, then you push the launch button, that brings a little orange launch icon up on the digital gauge cluster here, and then you pretty much launch, or what that really means is do a big burnout, which we'll test out now. Okay, nobody's coming. We are in Sport S Plus. Traction control is turned off. Push the launch button and nothing happens. There we go. Launch control is on. Left front on the brake, right front on the gas. <laughs> oh boy, left a lot of smoke there. Whoops. And there's launch control. So yeah, this car will do a nice burnout. We'll do a very nice burnout. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. All right, let's do one more launch. Launch button is on, left foot is on the brake, right foot is on the gas. Jeez. So it'll launch at like 6,500, 7,000 RPM. It'll launch pretty much at red line. And then the tires don't link up until almost 60 miles 
per hour. That was insane. I mean, this car is not perfect, but the fact that you can do that is pretty cool. So there's your look at the 2021 Lexus RCF Fuji Speedway Edition. Uh, this car definitely has a niche appeal, and I think that's a large part of the reason that they're only building 60 of these for the 2021 model year. Although I should add that for 2022, they're going to build 50 more. So in total, when it's all said and done, it sounds like there will be 110 of these in the United States. Uh, for 2021, this car is available in this gray color and white, but the 2022 model will be available exclusively in blue. So there you go. Uh, as far as the core vehicle goes here, you get the carbon fiber bits, you get the titanium exhaust, you get carbon ceramic brakes, which have a lot of stopping power. But I still think that the real highlight is this five liter Lexus V8. Uh, engines like this aren't going to be around for much longer due to emissions reasons. So the RCF Fuji Edition here, to me, it kind of represents the five liter V8 in its optimal application, or at least one of its best applications. Uh, beyond that though, Kind of a quirky car. You gain all these performance bits, but you lose heated seats, which is uh, kind of a bummer. I really like heated seats, especially in a $100,000 car. But uh, overall, the big appeal here is the 5 liter V8 and the exclusivity. I think this car is going to appeal to people who are already big fans of the Toyota and Lexus brands. Um, you can certainly get more performance from a competitor. Uh, but for about $100,000, this car is a pretty good balance of performance and exclusivity. And I think that wraps up the RCF Fuji edition here. Thank you for watching.